Hallelujah. Praise God. This is once again a love slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here to bring you the good word of the Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied to you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. We've been talking about seeking first the kingdom of God and his way of doing things. And all other things shall be added unto us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That was in the book of Matthew 6.33. But before we go there, I, I want us to see the scripture very quick in the book of John chapter 3. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. John chapter 3, verses number 3. The Lord Jesus, Jesus answered, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, that unless a person is born again, anew from above, he cannot ever see how he cannot ever see, no, be acquainted with and experience the kingdom of God. Verses 4, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter his mother's womb again and be born? Verses 5, Jesus answered, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, unless a man be born of water and uh, even the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now we see here that God has a physical kingdom. There is a physical kingdom of God. Jesus said we could enter the physical kingdom of God, which uh, Matthew when you read uh, the Bible say Jesus started preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But Luke says Jesus started preaching the kingdom of God is at hand. Now many of us want to know the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. When you read the Bible carefully, the kingdom of heaven is never mentioned in the gospel of uh, Luke, Mark, or John. It's only mentioned in Matthew. It's only Matthew that uses the language kingdom of heaven. But Luke, Mark, and also John at times, they only use the language kingdom of God. And there are some parables in Matthew that says kingdom of heaven. But when you read Luke, it says kingdom of God. So what are the differences? It's, it's all the same thing. Praise God. Heaven belongs to God as God's kingdom. Hallelujah. So the difference is that it's only Matthew that uses kingdom of heaven. We don't have to be all technical about it. It's only Matthew that uses the word kingdom of heaven. When you study carefully, Luke never uses kingdom of heaven. He always uses kingdom of God. And Mark never uses kingdom of heaven and says kingdom of God. John never uses kingdom of heaven and says kingdom of God. And Paul the apostle also says, uses kingdom of God and kingdom of his Christ. So that's all. The same thing. Now God has a physical kingdom which is situated in the heavens. In the heavens. Physically situated there. Where everything is under God's control, moves under God's control. Now we define that a kingdom is a territory, a country, a nation that is ruled by a leader, a commander, who is called a king. And everybody, every person in that country, or on that territory, is under the influence of that king, is under the control of that king. This means if a king sees this is how you have to live your life, that is how you have to live your life. You can't live your life otherwise. You are under the king, under the king's domain. Do you see that? You are under the king's control. You are under the king's influence. Unless you travel out of that kingdom, you are under the king's influence. What he says is what goes. His way of doing things becomes your way of doing things. This means that when you are under the king's territory, you don't live your life anyhow. When the king makes a decree, you can't say, I won't do it. I know many of us don't understand the concept of ki kingdom because maybe... We, we've never studied about kingdoms or we've never learned anything about kingdoms. You see, but the kingdom language is all over the Bible. It's everywhere in the Bible. 
the kingdom language. And in the Old Testament, it was more kingdoms, more kingdoms that were existing at that time. And there are still kingdoms now in some countries, but you might find them in some, maybe some, not, not the entire country, but some cities or provinces, or some parts of Africa and all that. Praise God. And even other continents. Thank you. We have the United Kingdoms as well. Thank you, Jesus. We are talking about the kingdom of God. The physical kingdom of God is a place, heaven, where God has absolute control over even the animals. Everything is under God's control. Everything is under God's control. There is nothing there that is not under God's control. Everything, which is heaven. The angels, the animals, the plants, the seeds, everything is under his control. The human beings there, they're all under God's control. Nobody does whatever they want to do, not even the animals. Praise God. That is in a physical place where we belong to. That is where you come from. You're born up there. You've entered there. Praise God. Now, see, the only way you can be part of that kingdom is when you are born of God. You cannot enter there by your works. You cannot enter into that kingdom by your, your prayers or by your fasting. This is a kingdom you can only belong to when you're born of the Spirit. So see it as a physical kingdom in heaven that exists. Of course. In some years to come, that kingdom will physically come down on earth. But see that physical kingdom of God in heaven, where everything is under God's control, under God's influence. Everything is ruled by God. The plants, the trees, the animals, everything. The Bible says in that kingdom there is no death. There is no disease, no sickness, no sorrows, no fear, no worry, no anxiety. So everybody that lives in that kingdom does not worry, does not have anxiety, does not die, no sickness, no sorrows, because they are under the sovereign control and influence of God. And God has everything under his control. Because of that, anything that is under God's control doesn't die. Everything that is under God's control has no sickness. Everything that is under God's control has no disease. Everything that is under God's control has no fear. Yes. You cannot be under God's control and have fear in your life. Never. You cannot be under God's control and have uh, anxiety, worries, disease. You cannot be under God's control and be committing fornication, adultery. No. So in that physical kingdom, there is no abominable thing that exists there. Nothing undefiled. That exists in that kingdom. Nothing of such. Only goodness. That exists in that kingdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want us to see the scripture very quick. In the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 13. It says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Blessed are those who cleanse their garments that they may have the authority and right to the tree of life and enter through the gates into the city. What city is he talking about? This is the city of God. Enter into the gates. See, enter through the gates into the city. Verses 15. But without other dogs and those who practice sorceries, magic arts, impurity, the lewd adulterers and the murderers, and the idolaters, and everyone who loves and deals in falsehood, untruth, 
error, deception, cheating. I, Jesus, have sent my messenger, angel to you, to witness and to give you assurance of these things for the church's assemblies. I am the root, the source, and the offspring of David, and the radiant and brilliant morning star. You see? So now there is a physical kingdom of God in the heavens, as I said, which is in the heavenlies. But in, in some time to come, it will come on earth. Now, let me see this, that the kingdom of God is not just in the third heavens, but there are other galaxies that God has created, other planets that God has created, where his kingdom is physically there also, but which the Bible doesn't speak, talk much about it. So we shouldn't think that God's kingdom is just in the third heavens. No. He is too big. He's a huge God. Hallelujah. He has many planets and galaxies where his kingdom is established. But it was on the earthly kingdom, it was on the earthly, on the earth, that the devil sought to have dominion. Sought to have dominion. Praise God. All right. But in the third heavens, where God has absolute control and dominion, or in the heavenlies where God has absolute control and dominion, there is a place called the city of God, Mount Zion. And that city will come down on the earth. You see, in every kingdom, a place in a country where the king has dominion over the entire country, the king himself might not personally be over every province. He will set up princes there. But the king will have his own city where he sits, where his throne is. The same way in the heavenlies, God has his own city where he is. But even the place, so in the entire heavens, besides the second heavens, in the entire heavens, God rules there. He has his dominion physically established. Everybody is subject to him. But he has a city where his throne is. The city of God. When you read Hebrews chapter 12, you see it. The city of God. Where it says, you've come, you have not come to Sinai. You have come to Mount Zion. That is where the throne of God is, physically in heaven. Mount Zion, that the hill of God, the holy hill of God. When you read Psalms, it says, who shall I send into God's hill? If it has clean hands. So that is the holy hill of God, Mount Zion which was physically also in Jerusalem. It's in Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. Though God has a physical kingdom, he has his own city. And we won't get into that. So now that God has a physical kingdom, that kingdom we saw in Reve Revelation says it will come down. Not the entire heavens, but the city of God will come down. The city of God will come down, that heavenly Jerusalem will come down and be established upon the earth. Where the kingdom of God will be physically present on earth. On earth. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now the Lord Jesus Christ told us that we should seek first the kingdom of God. And his way of doing things, his righteousness, and all other things will be added unto us. This means he was telling us, listen, you are born of God. You are born of the Spirit of God. You are a citizen of God's kingdom in heaven. You have entered into that kingdom. Why? Because you are born of the Spirit of God. You couldn't enter. You couldn't enter into that kingdom by your works because you were first of all born in sin. You were under the control and dominion of Satan. And nothing abominable can enter into that kingdom. No dogs, no unclean thing can enter through the gates of that kingdom. No darkness can enter into the gates of that kingdom. The only people that belong to that kingdom are those that are born there. Born of the Spirit of God. 
And that is what happened when you accepted Jesus. You see, so the Lord Jesus Christ came to bring us into that heavenly kingdom. Bring us under the rulership, the control of God. Deliver us from the influence and control of Satan. Colossians 1.13. Let us read there. Hallelujah. Some of us, we think we just accept Jesus Christ and live our lives anyhow. No. Colossians 1.13. It says, The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. You see that? Now, Jesus Christ, through his death and his resurrection, through his death, we receive deliverance and control. We receive deliverance from the control and dominion of darkness, of Satan. So we were under the dominion of Satan. This means Satan was or is the God of every person that is born on this earth. Every person that is born on earth is being ruled and controlled by Satan. This means that it will be controlled by sickness, disease, fear, anxiety, worry. Remember, every king that is ruling over a country has his own way of doing things. And a king always makes a decree or a king always makes laws based on their nature, based on their character, based on their personality. What do I mean by that? When a king is making decrees or when a king is making laws, the king makes laws based on what they like and what they don't like. It's based on their personality. Example, King Nebuchadnezzar. He was a pagan worshiper, an idol worshiper. So he made a, an image, a golden image. And everybody had to bow down and worship that golden image. Because he was a pagan worshiper. Automatically, everybody in his kingdom becomes... An expression of who he is because what he likes you don't have to like you are under his control you are under his influence you will start to like the things he likes you will start to behave the way he behaves this is why even the 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 young men that were taken captive in Jerusalem in Israel and brought uh, brought into his kingdom which was Daniel Shadrach Meshach Abednego and other young men from Israel, when they were brought, they had to eat the king's meat. They had to eat the delicacies of the king's table. But Daniel and the three friends decided, no, they rather eat vegetables. They don't want to defile themselves for the king's food. Do you see that? But normally everybody was supposed to. This is why the three friends, when they refused to bow down, to Nebuchadnezzar, they were thrown into the fiery furnace because a king sent forth a decree and everybody in his kingdom must be like him. This means they must worship the same gods he worship. They must hate the gods he hates. They must do the things he says not to do. Do the things he says to do, not do the things he says not to do. If you don't do, if you disobey him, you are subject to punishment. That is a kingdom. It's a kingdom. The king's word there is power. Solomon said, where the word of the king is, there is power. He has control and influence over everybody. Now, everybody that was born on earth, every born child on this planet was under the control and influence of Satan. The day a baby is born on this planet is born under the control of and dominion of Satan, of darkness. This means the person is automatically in the kingdom of darkness when they, they are born. And they are God of Satan. Do you see that? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. This is why one must be born from above. Born of the Spirit. Born of the Spirit. Before you can enter through the gates of that kingdom. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the way into that kingdom. But now that you have accepted Jesus, you were delivered from the control and influence of darkness. This means everything that proceeds from darkness, the nature of Satan, the 
personality, the character of darkness, of Satan, you've been delivered from that. You've been delivered from fear. You've been delivered from the control of anxiety, the control of worry. You've been delivered from the control of evil spirits. You've been delivered from the control of sickness. You've been delivered from the control of poverty. You've been delivered from the influence and control of bitterness, of resentment, of hatred. You were delivered from that because it's not God's nature. It's not God's character and personality. You were delivered from that, from that control, and then you were born of the Spirit and transferred into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Now you are under the control of God's dear Son. You are under the influence of God. This means you are under the control and influence of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. You are born now in, the, in God's kingdom. You have entered into the kingdom. Do you see that? Physically, you are spiritually, I mean, you are there in that kingdom, seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus in that kingdom. That is where you come from. You are born. You were born anew in that kingdom. But now you are physically on earth for a purpose, for an assignment. What is it for? <laughs> Praise Jesus. You were born anew, born from above. Born of God. Born of the Spirit of God. Not of flesh, nor of blood, nor of the will of man. You are now born of the Spirit of God. Born into another kingdom. You don't belong to this world. Though you are in this world, you're not of this world. You don't belong to Satan. He cannot rule over your life. Hallelujah. Now the Lord Jesus Christ is making us understand that. Listen, you are of another kingdom. You belong to the kingdom of God. You are on this earth, but you must seek for the control of God in your life. You must seek for the dominion of God in your life. Don't allow Satan to control your life. Why? Because the people of this world live for, uh, for clothes. The pagans, the idol worshippers, the people that are of the kingdom of this world, those that are born under the worldly system, under the system of darkness, under the control and dominion of darkness. Darkness is controlling their lives. So all they seek for is for clothes. All they seek for is for food. They are only concerned and led by physical or fleshly things. They only gratify the desires of Satan, the lust of the flesh. That is all they live for. But it say, it shall not be so with you. With, with you, you shall seek for the control of God in your life. You're not here to seek for money. You're not here to seek for a good life. You're not here to seek for houses. You're not here to seek for cars. You are born of God's kingdom. Where you come from? The cities are made of gold. They are made of sapphire. They are made of, 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 of diamonds. Why would you seek for an earthly habitation? Why would you live your life and work and waste your strength for houses that are built out of dust that will be destroyed anytime soon? Why would you store up your treasure on the earth where God will burn up everything with fire? Since while you are here, you are here for a purpose. You are here to accomplish. You are here to bring the control of God on the earth, to bring the dominion of God's kingdom on the earth where you are. So Jesus is seek for God's control in your life because you are born in his kingdom under his control. Though you are, you might not see yourself physically there, spiritually you're there and physically on this earth, but it says, why is he on this earth? Seek for his control in your life. Allow God to have control in your spirit, soul, and body. Live for him on the earth. Why? Be, the reason why God wants to have control over our lives, or the reason why he wants us to seek for his control over our lives, because if we live under his control, then he will be able to have control of our neighborhoods through us. He'll be able to have control in our workplaces through us. He'll be able to have control over other people's lives through us. He wants to establish his kingdom in us and through other people. Hallelujah. The dominion of God, the rulership of God in our lives. The first 
important thing that you need is not more money. You don't need more money. It's not a husband or wife you need. It's not a car you need. These things are important. But the most important thing you have to seek for is for God's control, God's rulership in your life. It's to seek for God to dominate your life, spirit, soul, and body, because you are born in his kingdom. You are to live under the decrees, the principles, the righteousness of God. You must do things his way, not your way. Because if not, if you don't seek for his control over your life, Satan will control your life. Because the kingdom of darkness is seeking to control your life. Satan is seeking to bring fear in your life. You are not in his kingdom, but he is seeking to control your life. So you must seek for God to have control in your spirit, soul, and body. If not, Satan will control you. Stay blessed until we meet each other next time. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is once again a love slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. He had to bring you the good word of the Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied to you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. We've been talking about seeking first the kingdom of God and his way of doing things and all other things shall be added unto us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That was in the book of Matthew 6 33 but before we go there I, I want us to see the scripture very quick can he enter his mother's womb again and be born verses 5 Jesus answered I assure you most solemnly I tell you unless a man be born of water and uh, even the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God hallelujah now we see here that God has a physical kingdom there is a physical kingdom of God Jesus said we could enter the physical kingdom of God, which uh, Matthew, when you read uh, the Bible, say Jesus started preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But Luke says Jesus started preaching the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, many of us want to know the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. When you read the Bible carefully, the kingdom of heaven is never mentioned in the gospel of uh, Luke mark or john it's only mentioned in matthew it's only matthew that uses the language kingdom of heaven but luke mark and also john at times they only use the language kingdom of god and there are some parables in matthew that says kingdom of heaven but when you read luke it says kingdom of god so what are the differences it's, it's all the same thing praise god Heaven belongs to God as God's kingdom. Hallelujah. So the difference is that it's only Matthew that uses kingdom of heaven. We don't have to be all technical about it. It's only Matthew that uses the word kingdom of heaven. When you study carefully, Luke never uses kingdom of faith. He always uses kingdom of God. And Mark never uses kingdom of heaven as his kingdom of God. John never uses kingdom of heaven as his kingdom of God. And Paul the Apostle also says, uses kingdom of God and kingdom of his Christ. So that's all the same thing. Now God has, in the book of John chapter 3, thank you precious Lord Jesus. John chapter 3, verses number 3. The Lord Jesus, Jesus answered, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, that unless a person is born again, anew from above, he cannot ever see how he cannot ever see, no, be acquainted with and experience the kingdom of God. Verses 4, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? 